Now, the Grindrod Low Vol Tracks is an ETF which tracks the performance of the S&P South Africa Low Volatility Index. It has a market cap of 291 million rand, a dividend yield of 4%. Unpack it for us, Noreena. Uh, I have to be the first one to say I'm a little lost on this one. <laughs> so this is one of those that fall into this category, which is, um, I think, a, a little bit incorrectly termed smart beta or smart ETFs. I prefer the term strategic beta. What you're really looking at there is that you're not investing into a particular geographic region or a particular sector or even an overall market. You're buying into a strategy, which in this particular case is low volatility. So the S&P Low Volatility Index looks at the top 150 stocks listed on the JSE and then they select the 40 stocks that have the lowest volatility i.e. the lowest standard deviation price standard deviation over the last year and that uh, those are the stocks that make it into the low volatility ETF not only do that dictate the, the selection criteria but the weight that it has in the index also is determined by the volatility so the least volatile stock has got the highest relative weight but it's relatively low there's nothing more than 4% into an individual why stock why would in you want index. to invest in in this theme, Byron? Well, I've actually got a friend who works at Grinrod Bank who's very much involved in building these ETFs, and he was giving me lots of uh, interesting information last night. I gave him a call. Um, and uh, he said, you know, the basis of this ETF is that it's not going to outperform during the big bull markets, but when, you know, there's big pullbacks, um, that's where it's going to outperform. It's going to protect you mm, from it's, the downside. It's got great protection. And in that instance, um, when you look at the dip we saw in October last year, mm -hmm. it comfortably outperformed uh, the, all, the Aussie 40, uh, sorry, the, the, the Aussie. And um, in, on that basis, over that period of time, it's, it's outperformed uh, the all share. Um, so because it, it has so much downside protection, um, the overall performance has been better. Narina, sounds like good insurance. Yes, definitely. So I do think that there's a lot of people that are concerned about the level of the market that feels that we need a bit of consolidation that might include a pullback. And therefore, I'm very much in favor of a lower risk strategy at this stage. The other thing that I like about this one also is that it actually goes all the way into the small cap index. So most of our other ETFs are focused on the top 40 or maybe sort of the top 60 companies on the JSE. Here you actually have the opportunity to in be invested in the small cap stocks but the low volatility small cap stocks so it's the quality small cap stocks that you get with this investment and that's one of the reasons why I like it so much during a period as we currently have which is slightly uncertain and maybe concerned about toppishness in the market. Perhaps the strategy here is to have some exposure to this ETF. Yeah, it's certainly nice, nice to have as a, a safe bet in the portfolio. Um, when you look at the under, underlying constituents, it's, it's got quite a heavy weighting towards the property stocks. Yes. I mean, that's understandable. They are less volatile. Um, I think it distills quite a big constituent there. But as you mentioned, nothing really more than 3%. So really nicely diversified. Yeah. Um, but, you know, cautious. Um, if you can handpick a few of those stocks, I mean, this is, again, me being a, a, a stock selector um, and, and, and benefit from those as opposed to having the, the whole bunch. I don't know. You've got to weigh up your, your mm. pros and cons there. All right. Well, let's weigh up our pros and cons and call it hot or not. For me, it's hot at this stage, but I like what Byron says. Look into the ETF and see what you're actually invested in. It has a high proportion of financial and real estate shares. So if the rest of your portfolio, your actively managed stocks, already have a lot of that, be careful for duplication. But as it is, the low volatility ETF by Grinrod, for me, hot. Yeah, I think it's obviously very well managed. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and, and uh, you know, with it, big eyes on interest rate changes and so on going forward uh, in the U.S., you know, maybe it is quite nice to have something that's uh, a bit more defensive and, and benefits when markets are more volatile. So I'll be hot on it.